Welcome back to Google Cloud Next Hello. 2017 in San Francisco. <laughs> I'm Timothy Jordan, a developer advocate and host of The Dev Show. And I'm Drew Alfonso, a program manager on Google for Education and one of the hosts for the G Suite Show. So this is the last day of Google Cloud Next, and what a week it's been. That's right, Drea. Today is dedicated to open source and cloud-native architectures with deep dives on Kubernetes and TensorFlow. We'll hear from startups and the venture capital community about how they're leveraging the cloud, just as action-packed as yesterday. And speaking of yesterday, we put together some of our favorite moments for you to enjoy. And here they are. Good morning, and welcome to the second day of our Next our network. It's probably the largest global network today, between 25 and 40% of global internet user traffic. We put a security chip on all our new machines to serve as the basis of trust for that machine's identity. In fact, it's so small that I'm actually wearing one on my earring here. At G Suite, we're obsessed with the idea that computers should constantly raise the bar on what then can get done at the mundane so that our users, your employees, have more and more time to focus on truly creative work. The cloud enables innovative business models, new ways of you creating and changing your business that you wouldn't have been able to do before. Jamboard is a whiteboard in the cloud, in the meeting room, and beyond your meeting rooms. You just pick up the stylus and you start thinking, communicating, and working with your team. Why do they come to GCP? They want the world's best security. They want to be on a flywheel of, of continued innovation, all available through an API. The core promise to developers still remains the same. Bring your code and Google will handle everything else. So that was day two. Drea, you also had a chance to talk with someone about Stackdriver, right? You know, I sure did. I talked with Amir, a product manager on Stackdriver, about monitoring, logging, and diagnostics for the cloud. Let's check it out. Hi, everyone. I'm here with Amir, who's leading a session about alerting best practices called the thin line between informing and over-informing that everyone will have an access to in the next couple of days. So Amir, before we dive into your session, tell us more about what you do at Google. Okay, hi, Drea. I'm also <laughs> excited to be here. So I'm a product manager um, on Google Cloud Platform, and I focus on our Stack Stackdriver services suite. Yep. Um, Stackdriver is all about monitoring, logging, mm -hmm. and diagnostics for our users that are running their applications on cloud services. Mm -hmm. And I'm based um, here in Mountain View. Oh, nice. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> so when it comes to, as we mentioned, the topic of the session, alerting best practices, but also learning more about Stackdriver, why is this important when we're thinking about the cloud? So um, over the years, we work with a lot of our users, um, you know, making sure they, they have everything set up correctly and they're correctly monitoring their applications. And we realized that um, alerting is the hardest part to get right. Mm -hmm. And so we wanted to use this opportunity to share the things we've learned both with Stackdriver and monitoring inside Google to help our users and users of other um, you know, cloud uh, platform providers um, get alerting right. For example, we come across cases where users um, alert too often or right. they don't alert on the right things. And mm -hmm. so we want to share our insights. Right, and then how does Stackdriver fit into all of that? So Stackdriver is our um, service that enables users to alert on um, things that they run in the cloud. Got it. Uh, but the ser session is also applicable to um, users of other either competing services or free sh uh, free services, open source. Right. So it's really applicable to, to anyone that's... Um, that's running production services in the cloud, mm -hmm. and they want to make sure that um, their users are presented with sort of their best foot forward. Right. And so in addition to leading some of the sessions on that, I guess for you, what are you most excited about when it comes to the future of the cloud and when it comes to the specific products that you're working on? OK, so with uh, Stackdriver and generally in cloud, I'm, I'm really excited to see that the focus is shifting from maintenance and that kind of overhead to really innovate, in innovation. Mm -hmm. So users today have uh, better tools that are it's easier to set up and require um, very low overhead. And so they can focus their efforts instead, on, uh, instead of on maintaining, right. on innovating. And so mm -hmm. that leads to uh, better applications and better services and you know, 
more exciting things that we see out there. Right, exactly. Well, Amir, thanks for joining us today and giving us a little sneak peek into your sessions that you're going to be doing at Cloud Next. Um, and we'll definitely have the chance to check it out on YouTube in our recorded sessions. Thank you, Adria. Right, thank you. And of course, Timothy and I got to spend some more time in the Cloud Showcase. And just like yesterday, we thought, wouldn't it be cool if we brought you along as well? Let's check it out. So here we are at the Jamboard, and I'm standing with Ishwarya. Ishwarya, could you tell the live stream viewers uh, what you do at Google? Yeah, I'm a product manager on the Jamboard team. So uh, for those few people out there that don't yet know what a Jamboard is, what is it? Jamboard is a fun, digital, collaborative whiteboard. Everyone loves how it looks. It looks great in the room. This is the first thing people walk to. Um, and it's fun just to like write on it. The other thing it is, is um, it's a great collaboration device for people who are working, for example, in remote offices. So you could be in New York and I could be in London. And let's say you're on a Jamboard, I could pull up my tablet and we could be jamming on the same file. And we can collaborate together, sketch, um, just anything that you would do on like a normal whiteboard, you could do on this Jamboard, but instead of taking a picture at the end of the session and emailing it to me, we could be doing it real time, and you can just send it to me, add people, and then you can add me. That's, a That's awesome. I mean, I know we spent a lot of time on VC, All and the <laughs> there's, there's whiteboards behind us, and you kind of sketch, and you sort of have to turn the camera right. so you can or see each other, or take the picture, over to people. and it just adds so much overhead to the, to the collaborative process right. when you're in different offices. Exactly. Now you mentioned too, like some of the sketching and handwriting we can do, but what are some of the other kind of like cool things that we can like pop in and do some brainstorming on? Yeah, so um, for example, let's say we want to talk about dogs during a meeting. So once these images show up, you can just Aww, Pull them out. Select which ones you like. And then chain them up. And then if you want to delete, just slide them down. Um, so that's something really cool. And then another thing that I love is the web search. Mm. So anything that you would search on like google.com, right. um, you can just search in here. Let's say I want to go to New York City and I just want to pull up a map of Manhattan, this will take a while, but you can just like crop out the image and pull it into your jam and start writing on it, mark places on it, star places, mm -hmm. send the file to your friends. You can all like mark different places at the same time, um, pull in images, like right. a donut place, yeah. and then pull an image <laughs> of donuts from that place. Another thing that's pretty awesome is the handwriting recognition. So not everyone has amazing handwriting like me. <laughs> so for people like those, um, There we go. Yeah. That was really cool. And then you can also scale these. If need to. Yeah. Well, thank you for the quick tour of the jam board. I uh, I'm excited want, to start jamming. This is the Meet the Experts area, where developers get to ask experts from Google their questions and work on solutions together. I'm going to join Drea over here, who's found some of the Firebase crew, and we're going to talk about something that just launched. Hey, y'all. How you doing? Hello there. <laughs> All right, so this is Doug, and he's going to tell us about something that just launched. Yeah, so today we just announced uh, Google Cloud Functions for Firebase, uh, which is a tool that lets developers write back in code that responds to events in their Firebase project. Now, I'm really excited about this, but some people might not know exactly what that's for. So why don't you tell us what developer problems does this solve? Yeah, so what we found is that developers really don't want to uh, create their own servers, maintain them, uh, upgrade them, and constantly deploy to them. So uh, what they'd rather do is just write their code, deploy it to Google service, and let Google handle all of the you know, administrivia, the, you know, the ops, and all that. So it's a really great tool uh, that developers are using to build their, the backends for their mobile app. So tell us, where do we go to learn more, and how do developers get started with that? Yeah, so you can go to firebase.google.com. Uh, you can find the functions feature there, and there's instructions to get started, so you can get uh, get going with that right away. Awesome. Cool <laughs> stuff. <laughs> Thanks a lot, y'all. We'll catch you soon. All right, so here we are in the G Suite area, and I found Wes to tell us a little bit about what's going on. Hi, Wes. Hey, everybody. How are you doing? 
We're doing great. Now, one of the things that I think is really cool about what G Suite offers is there's a little something uh, for people to build things, to solve problems in their enterprise, no matter what their technical skill level. Can you tell us a little bit about that suite? Right, exactly. So we have like developer tools uh, that for people who are full-time developers, but we also have stuff where, you know, if you're trying to get something done, trying to build like a little app to like put together a report, you don't have to be a hardcore software engineer. So we have a cool new product called AppMaker, which is a low code development environment where you can go from idea to app in days, not months, and you don't really need an engineering resource. All you need to do is be able to drag and drop things and you can build a simple UI, add the connectors and boom, all of a sudden you are done and gone. Um, the next step up, if you really, really want to do a little bit more work, is that AppMaker runs on top of AppScript, which is Google's JavaScript in the cloud environment that gives you access and your apps access to data in, in Google uh, Apps, uh, uh, G Suite. Uh, in, uh, you, know, you can access other Google services, but you can also make external calls to like an, you know, an outside uh, relational database. Uh, and then for the hardcore software developers, then we have the REST APIs, where you can actually uh, integrate Google Drive, Gmail, Calendar, Sheets, and Slides into your applications. Ooh, a lot of stuff. So we also there's also been a lot of G Suite announcements and product mm -hmm. updates. Talk to us about some of your your favorites or highlights from those. Okay, great. This morning we announced that Team Drives is generally available, which is really exciting because now you know if. Uh, employees move or change jobs, you don't right. have to worry about, oh, who do we reassign the ownership <laughs> to, right? It's crazy. So everything is owned by the organization, and Team Drives is accessible from the Drive API as well, so your apps can integrate with Team Drives. The other announcement that was exciting this morning was a Gmail add-ons, where you can integrate your mini app and have it built into Gmail so that they can access your app without having to leave Gmail. You know, it's kind of like, the, breaking the cycle of, oh, I'm working in Gmail, oh, I got to pop out, go to another mm, app, and right. then, oh, I got to get back into <laughs> Too Gmail. Too many clicks. Exactly, <laughs> and it, your context is kind of crazy, so if you can actually build in a little bit of your app within Gmail, that gives for a better, seamless user experience. Mm. Awesome, all right, cool so uh, last question, uh -huh. if people want to get started on any of this, where should they go? Sure, best place to go is developers.google.com, and uh, you can find AppScript there, you can find AppMaker there, Gmail add-ons, Google Drive and Team Drives. Ooh, Thank you so cool much, Russ. All right, take care. Thanks. See you guys. Have fun. Hey, everyone. We're here at the Cloud Spanner booth with Selena. So before we talk about what we're doing here, Selena, tell us more about what you do at Google. I do product marketing for GCP databases. <laughs> now, we're at the Spanner booth, yes. and Spanner is something that I'm particularly excited mm -hmm. about. Yes, you are. <laughs> <laughs> I certainly am. I've talked a lot about it. I, I've, you know, but I've always been frustrated by having to choose between horizontal scaling and strong transactional consistency. But with Spanner, I don't have to choose. Yeah, and you, you really hit the nail on the head there. You don't have to choose, and that having a relational database that also scales horizontally and keeps a strong transactional scale is huge, and that's what we're really excited about. Um, and not to mention it's also in the cloud, so it's fully managed. Yeah, that makes it a lot more easy to implement. Right. And where can we go to learn more about it? Cloud.google.com slash Spanner. That was easy. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> Thanks, Lena. Well, Drea, it's almost time for the end of our pre-show. Oh, is it already? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> of course, that means it's almost time for the final keynote. That's true, and today's keynote has an awesome lineup dedicated to open source and cloud-native architectures. We'll do deep dives into Kubernetes and TensorFlow, and then we'll hear from Vint Cerf, Vice, Pre Vice President and Chief Internet Evangelist at Google on the history and value of free open source software for infrastructure. Next, Google Senior Fellow Jeff Dean will do a deep dive into TensorFlow. And then, Sam Ramji, VP of Product Management for Compute and Developer Services at Google Cloud, will talk about building an open cloud. We'll hear from startups and the venture capital community on how they're leveraging the cloud to build the next wave of innovative products and services. And finally, Allison Wagenfield, VP of Marketing at Google Cloud, will close out the keynote. Well, let's get to it. I think we should do that. That's it for us, but don't forget to connect with us online. Our Twitter handles are on your screen. Enjoy the show, and we'll see you next time.